was 1897, near the town of Boaz in southwestern Wisconsin. A large thunderstorm had swept through the area, flooding creeks and farmlands with torrential rains. Once the storm had finally passed and the water subsided, a farmer sent his four sons out to assess the damage to their property. What they found instead were the remains of a gigantic animal that would forever change what we know about Wisconsin's history. This is the story of the Boaz Mastodon. assess the damage to their family's property after a large flood in southwestern Wisconsin. As they walked along a small tributary of Mill Creek near present-day Highway 14, the brothers noticed a large bone sticking out of the mud where the banks of the creek had eroded away. The four began to dig. Before long, they realized that they had stumbled upon the skeleton of a very large animal. To make the story even more interesting, within one year, a second, more complete mastodon was discovered in an area called Anderson Mills, about 50 miles from Boaz. This second discovery would eventually be the key to a dramatic plot twist many years later. At nearly two-thirds complete, the skeleton was later identified as a mastodon, a very distant relative to modern-day elephants. Mammoth Americanum, better known as the American Mastodon, lived throughout North America from approximately 3.75 million to 11,000 years ago, going extinct at the tail end of the last ice age. Mastodons grew 8 to 10 feet tall and weighed between 4 and 6 tons. They had a trunk and long tusks that occasionally grew to 15 feet, as well as shaggy hair that covered their entire bodies. Some mastodons also bore a second set of tusks. These small vestigial leftovers from their ancient ancestors were typically only a few inches long and grew from their bottom jaw. Though they looked similar to woolly mammoths and modern elephants, they were only distantly related, with their closest common ancestor living millions of years ago. In contrast, mammoths and elephants are much more closely related to one another. Now some of the key differences between mastodons and mammoths are quite subtle. Woolly mammoths are very tall but shorter in length, whereas mastodons are shorter in height and longer in width. However, there is one telltale sign that will give away their identity every time, and all you need to do is look inside their mouths. Mammoth and mastodon teeth were extremely different, and this is because they had very different diets. Woolly mammoths had flat teeth containing many small ridges, allowing them to graze on the soft grasses and plants of Wisconsin's prairies and tundras that existed during the last ice age. Mastodon teeth were drastically different. These large teeth had enormous cones and knobs. Mastodons primarily browsed on tough branches and leaves that grew in the Wisconsin forests. These large knobs helped break down those fibrous foods. The Boaz Mastodon bones eventually made their way to our state capital. In 1915, it was purchased by the state of Wisconsin for approximately $50 and put on display in the UW-Madison Geology Museum, where it still resides today. The tusks were never found by the Dosh brothers, so these and other missing elements of the skeleton were replaced with bones from incomplete mastodon skeletons found elsewhere. Only now, more than 100 years after its initial discovery, are we beginning to unravel the mysterious past of this ancient animal. As the story goes, when the four brothers first excavated the skeleton, they also discovered a spear point amongst the bones. When UW-Madison first acquired the skeleton, the spear point wasn't included. 
It wasn't until sometime in the 1940s that a mysterious envelope was sent to the university containing a spear point and a note, which simply indicated that the item was, quote, allegedly found with the UW elephant, end quote. Later, in 1962, the two surviving brothers confirmed that this was most likely the spear point that they had found with their mastodon. Today, many questions remain. How old was the mastodon? Was the spear point truly found with the skeleton? Did ancient hunters kill the animal, or was it merely a coincidence that the spear point was found nearby? Some of these answers are beginning to reveal themselves. To celebrate the 100-year anniversary of the Mastodon's arrival at UW-Madison, researchers are working hard to discover these answers. In May of 2015, the university announced that the animal they have been calling the Boaz Mastodon for 100 years isn't necessarily the Boaz Mastodon. In fact, they determined that more bones in the skeleton are actually from the Anderson Mills specimen. Additionally, the researchers radiocarbon dated the bones and found that the Anderson Mills bones dated to almost 13,000 years old. The Boaz specimen, however, was only around 12,100 years old. So, if the story about the spear point is true, ancient Americans may have hunted the Boaz mastodon near that little stream in Boaz, Wisconsin. However, as more studies are conducted and more facts revealed, we're going to learn more and more about this amazing Wisconsin animal.